Man, what a great day to be alive because God wrote out before the beginning of time plans for you to prosper, for you to succeed. And I believe that today you're going to hear some things that are going to help set you up to truly, as Christians and believers, be successful. So trust me, you want to stay tuned. I'm here with Angela. Angela, tell us a little bit about why our viewers need to hear what we have to say today. Yes, I mean, we're all over the place. Some of us are in ministry. Some of us are doing full-time work as nurses and doctors. But a question that we want to posed to you today. Did Jesus teach about money mm -hmm. and business? Did the early church use business principles to do greater ministry? Money and ministry, the Bible and business all seem to oppose one another, but do they? Today we'll, we will explore the intersection of business and ministry with author and pastor Jeff Simmons, who has some wise insight to help us maximize God's resources. You know, Matt, I do think that a lot of times when we're examining the Bible and living our Christian life, mm -hmm. we think that that stands in stark contrast with business yeah. or secular things. Right, right. Well, I think it's just because the world has twisted money, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and if we think about it, business, a lot of times it's tied to money, but I believe that Jesus was probably a really good businessman in a <laughs> sense. And there's a lot of really good principles that we can take so that we can be successful. And so I'm looking forward to this interview today. Me I too. know we're all going to benefit a lot from it. Yeah. One thing I am looking forward to is that today on this Friday is we have something so, so fun on this one Friday. So let's check out today's edition of Fun Friday. Okay, so it looks like today's game is Name That Him, Angela. Our audio guy, Rick, will play us a snippet of a familiar hymn, and Angela, or Angela and I will have to guess the name of that song. So, Rick, hit us with that first It is well? It is well? Yes! <laughs> okay, okay. All right. One for one. Thank you very much. Rick, what's the next one here? That's all. Oh my gosh. The he washed the. <laughs> yeah. Washed it white as snow. I have no idea the name of that hymn. I only know the, the melody. Do we want to say that? Yeah. White as yeah. snow? Jesus paid it all. Wow. wow. Well, you know, I think that we do definitely, and by we, I mean you yeah. get points. <laughs> Goodness. Well, at least you knew the song. Yeah, you were singing yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, at least give us half a point, yeah. right? For for getting the I think song we can determine there. the point values yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. And Come we on. give ourselves a half a point. Yes, yes. <laughs> we're determining the points here, guys. <laughs> Go ahead, Angela. Oh my gosh. It is so fun here. I hope that you are having a blessed Friday. And we want to encourage you today in even a greater Friday and weekend as you begin to set your focus towards success in life. You know, money is oftentimes our biggest opposition to stepping out of the boat. We will often suspend our callings out of fear and ministries will get short circuited because they simply don't know how to execute on a vision. Sitting down with us now is pastor and author Jeff Simmons to discuss his new book, How to Maximize God's Resources for Kingdom Impact, The Business of Ministry. Welcome to Hope Today, Jeff. Hey, Matt, Angela, thanks for having me on today. Looking forward to being with you. 
We are so glad to have you, Jeff. And let's just dive in here. What is sure. what about your story kind of encouraged you to write a book about the business of ministry? Well, I appreciate you asking. You know, I, I grew up in a Christian home, so blessed. I had a wonderful, godly parents. I watched my dad be in business. He was a Christian businessman, so he would, you know, serve at the church, and then he would travel during the week. Uh, but man, he was so faithful to the Lord, and I thought, that's what I want to do. And so in college, I majored in finance and marketing in the business school, and I thought, well, I'd love to work, you know, maybe on the Chicago Stock Exchange or somewhere uh, that I could, you know, do well and be successful, but run a Christian company, serve in my local church, do missions, be generous, give a lot of money, you know, to ministry. And then I was interviewing with a company in St. Louis, and that night, God just got a hold of me. And I came back after the interviews. They went great, but I, I got down by my bed, and I just started praying, and the Lord wrecked me and said, I've called you to ministry. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, I didn't know what, what that meant, but but it was became a time of obedience for me. And so I went back in, told them, thanks for the interview, but I'm going into ministry. And uh, by God's grace, I became a student pastor, and so I had middle school, high school, and College students went to seminary, um, you know, and I love seminary, biblical hermeneutics and systematic theology. It was it was fun. Uh, but when I graduated and I started working in student ministry, the, I, I came to the church and it was right during budget season and all the pastors were stressed out, you know, and they're like, and I'm like, oh, yeah, budgets, no big deal. You know, revenue expenses, let's go. And, and it was amazing how the undergrad and business helped prepare me. For the ministry mm -hmm. and so what i've realized over the years you know about 20 years ago we planted a church here in nashville tennessee and just to watch god do what only god can do and grow his church uh, but there are so many business principles that are transferable into the church that will help maximize god's resources for kingdom impact mm -hmm. and so that's the reason i wrote the book is just to help fellow pastors and nonprofit leaders and lay leaders in church and ministry do greater work for the kingdom of god you know, Matt and I were talking beforehand with you, and I think a lot of us forget that not only are pastors ministering to people, but they are CEOs of organizations. And that requires a whole new set of a bandwidth of skills and expertise. Jeff, what are some of those things you wish they had taught you in seminary? Oh, I mean, you know, HR, I mean, you know, you're dealing with, uh, you got incredible people and godly, but, you know, there is a lot of human resources that you deal with on an everyday basis. And, you know, construction, working with, you know, zoning regulations for you're expanding, you know, you're having a campus, you're starting a new campus. Uh, I mean, nonprofit, you know, we started a nonprofit called Justice and Mercy International, and we have work in Moldova with orphans, and we work in the Amazon uh, with river people taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. There are a lot on international law that, you know, that nobody prepares you for these things. And by God's grace, you know, I had a little bit of a background and then starting to learn more and more. But finding the right people to come around you, whether you're in a nonprofit, whether you're in a church or whether you're in a Christian school, uh, there's godly men and women who will come alongside you and help you in these areas. Uh, but there are so many different areas that it's not just, hey, how can I minister to somebody? How can I go visit the hospital or or do a wedding or a funeral, which I love? But man, there's so much more to uh, running a church, a ministry, you know, uh, for the glory of God. So, Jeff, I know a lot of us will sit and will be feel like, well, business seems just so contrary. It doesn't belong in the church. It doesn't doesn't have its place there. So tell us, did Jesus teach about business and money? And did the early church actually implement business practices to fulfill the greater ministry? Oh, great question, Angela. Yeah, I do think sometimes we think there's a tension there between business and ministry. And yet Jesus talked about money almost more than any other topic, right? Because he knew from where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And so it's so important for us to handle those things well. You know, I think about Matthew 25, Jesus tells the parable of the story about the man going on the journey. He called his three servants together and to one he entrusted five talents or bags of gold, some translations say, right? To another two, to another one. You know the story. And he goes away on the journey, but he comes back and he calls them to be accountable. And they have to stand before him and give an account. And to one, he says, hey, I had five, but I gained five more. Here's 10 to another, you know, two, but I gained two more. And he's like, well done, good and faithful servants. You, you handled that well. And yet 
to the one, the one said, I was afraid. And so I hid the talent. And he goes, here it is. And what does Jesus say? He says, you wicked, lazy servant. Those are pretty strong words, okay? I mean, like coming from Jesus. He says, take the one from him and give it to the one who has 10. And, and you're going, whoa. But what you're seeing there is Jesus is saying, you're going to be held accountable for what you do, right? With what you were given. And so I think for all of us, there is this call, this responsibility. And whether it's it's money or it's responsibility, it's the you know opportunities, it's the leadership roles, we're called to be faithful in that. And I long for every one of us, Angela, Matt, I long for every one of us to hear, well done, yes. good and faithful servant, right? Well done. And, and, and I want that for my life and for everybody here at our church or not profit, for all of us as Christ followers. And God has entrusted us with so much. I mean, we live in the wealthiest nation that's ever existed in history. And so for the church, this is our time. I mean, we can end hunger in the world, right? We can make such an impact for the glory of God. We can, we can bring revival to this land by the God's grace of us joining together in Jesus' return. And so I want us to maximize those resources. And, and to your point, Angela, too, you see that in the early church, right? I mean, the early church is growing. Acts chapter 2, there's 3,000. I mean, it, it wasn't a small church. I mean, we're talking mega church, right? I mean, so, and then they, the disciples say, we don't have enough time to, to prepare sermons and, and to pray. So we need to call out men who are full of wisdom in the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 6. And they do. But, but you also see the accountability there. You know, remember Ananias and Sapphira? Wow. I mean, they lied about money and giving to the church and they were struck dead, you know? And so then you got, you know, Barnabas who sells a field and gives it all and lays it at the feet of the apostles. And the church continues to grow from 3,000, 5,000, 20,000 into where we are today. And so may God find us faithful, you know? And I think that's the call for every one of us. What, what a powerful viewpoint, Jeff. I mean, you even kind of just said it, even just the key word of mega church mindset. That, I mean, to me, that's just big thinking. That's just God thinking. And could you maybe even help just speak to maybe some of those out there that are battling with those thoughts of, well, it's easy for maybe people who are in, in the ministry full time to be driven with, by big thoughts. I'm just in a cubicle or I'm just in a small business, you know, help them to think through because really we're all called to our own ministries to that extent. You know, how can they begin to look at what they do with a bigger viewpoint? Oh, great question, Matt. Yeah, I mean, you gotta think about that. God has called you, right? It's not an accident that you're in that cubicle. It's not an accident where you live. It's not an accident where your kids go to school. And for us to have a mindset of God, use me. You know, it, it, let me be the hands and feet of Christ. And God, give me a greater vision for my life. You know, don't let me be that one who hides and who's afraid. Let me be bold for the glory of God. Let me step out. You know, even the skill set that God's given you in that cubicle, applying that to church, applying that to your Christian school, applying that to a nonprofit or your public school, applying that in your community and saying, God, you've given me a gift or a talent. Let me use that for your glory. Let me invest it for you. You know, I, I come back to Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, right? Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. I mean, God is able, you know? And so you think about that in your life, that God is able. And so whatever fear you have, whatever worry you have, God is able, God is greater. And he's able to do immeasurably more, right? I think we settle for so little in our lives and many times in our churches or, or in our ministries or even our life, we just settle for so little when God wants to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. And it's according to his power. Right? It's not us. And remember that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. When you are in Christ, that same Holy Spirit is alive in you. You know, according to his power, does that work within you? To him be glory in the church and throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And, and that's my heartbeat for all of us, right? That we can live in that boldness, that we can live in that call and live in that strength wherever we are. You know, God's got a plan and a purpose for you. Amen, immeasurably more. Now, Jeff, what is something that you wish before you had stepped into ministry? You know, of course you had that probably emotion of elation and peace and making the decision to follow the voice of the Lord. But after that comes some pitfalls when you make the decision. What is one piece of advice you wish you had known before you stepped into ministry full time? Yeah, I would just say that God is with you. You know, God has called you and God will accomplish his plans and his purposes. God's sovereign over it all. 
So t- don't live in fear. You know, don't live thinking, hey, you know, I'm going to mess up. Or And I think we all do. I think we all kind of live in this. Sometimes it's like, I'm, I don't measure up. I'm not going to be good enough. No, it, it's the Lord working through you. It's God who's going to receive the glory. So you just be bold. You know, you step out. Uh, I do think, you know, I mean, I'll just say the business of ministry or other business books or other, you know, learning. I think there's a lot out there that we can learn from. And and I think taking that wisdom and that experience from from other, you know, businesses, companies, churches, I think that helps us to go, I can grow in this area. You know, I don't have to know it all. I don't have to do it all by myself. I think sometimes pastors get isolated. It's a real danger. It's a real struggle. Uh, there's a lot of loneliness. There's an epidemic of loneliness in our country today, you know, and you can read about that, the Surgeon General and everybody else. But even Christians get isolated. They feel like, you know, oh, the culture's overwhelming, you know, but but the he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And so I just wish, you know, I would, I would just wish I knew that more when I was younger and, and, you know, continue to learn that every day. But for everybody who's a Christ follower who's watching today, listening today, man, live in that boldness, live in that strength. You know, you can't mess up. I mean, God is with you. God is for you. And, and don't let the world cave in on you. Don't let think that world's winning. No, God's going to win, right? And you look throughout history. Churches have always faced persecution and hardship. But man, the story of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God always wins. You're on the winning team. You're on the winning team. So let's be bold for the glory of God. Amen. Jeff, you, you know, you lead a successful church, I believe, of what, five campuses and, and thousands of people. You know, what are some practical steps? Because we could all gain from it in the church world and business world of um, what is it that you had to do to continue to grow? What did you have to implement? What resources, people, did, what does that look like for you? Oh, Matt, great question. Your time with the Lord has to stay, number one, right? I mean, your personal time with the Lord, getting up, spending time with him. There's always distractions that are going to come in, but keeping Jesus at the center of your heart. And then you hang on, you know, because God's the one who accomplishes the work. You stay faithful to him in your life. You stay faithful and just walk with him. You're not perfect. None of us are. But all of us, right, can be faithful to the Lord wherever we are. And then continue to learn. You know, be a lifelong learner, you know, and and whether it's the business of ministry book or, like I said, other books, there's other great resources out there. There's other great, you know, podcasts. And I mean, what you guys are doing, I mean, you can learn. And so being a lifelong learner, because God wants to teach us and God wants us never stop growing, never stop learning. And then, you know, taking those steps of faith. I think that's so important for every one of us. And we can get comfortable. We all do, right? Our whole society is built on us being comfortable, like having air conditioning. And, you know, we can kind of sit back on the couch and got Netflix. And it's like, I could just kind of dial it back. And God's like, no, you know, and for us, always taking the next step of faith, always, you know, getting out of the boat and going, okay, I'm going to trust that, that God's not finished with me. You know, if there's breath in your lungs, God's not finished with you, right? And God hasn't taken us home yet. So God's got a plan and a purpose. And I always believe, you know, there's another miracle coming around the corner. There's something that God's going to do, but God's always calling us to step out, to follow, to trust. And so I would say those three things would be really essential, you know, spending that time with the Lord, being a lifelong learner, following Jesus, and then taking those steps of faith is how you continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus. Jeff, we love those three points to be able to lean into as we might search and and pursue the call of God on our own personal lives. If you would just take 30 seconds and say a prayer Mm. to the one who is watching and is hesitant or maybe experiencing even some of that fear of stepping into the ministry and encourage them through prayer. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. Man, let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are with us, God, that you are for us. Thank you, God, that you're greater than anything that we will face today or this week or the rest of our lives. God, that you are stronger, that you are mightier, Father. And God, we place our faith and our trust in you today. And I pray for every single person listening today, Father. I pray one day that as they stand before you, that they will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And we're not good on our own merit. It's only by the grace of God that we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ. But God, we can be faithful. So Father, find us faithful as we walk, as we trust, as we follow you every step of the way. Thank you, God. You are good and gracious, God, and you are with us and for us today. And it's in the beautiful name of Jesus that I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ today. Amen. 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 
Jeff, thank you so much for being with us today. Wow, Angela, Matt, I've loved it. So thankful for you guys, and I'm praying for you and all God's doing through you, and just so grateful for everybody listening and watching today. Thank you. Don't go anywhere because when we return in 60 seconds, we're going to look at a particular scripture that instructs us on what we need to do if we want our plans to succeed. Stay with us. Discover what God's Word has to say about healing and deliverance. Best-selling author John Eckhart makes topical Bible study easy with his new book, Scriptures for Faith, Deliverance, and Healing. This handy reference is for those who want to have a greater understanding of healing and deliverance to incorporate God's Word into their prayers. Eckhart also includes targeted commentary to highlight key scriptures and life application. His spirit-filled perspective will enhance your time in God's Word and encourages the spiritual disciplines of memorization and meditation. Request scriptures for faith, deliverance, and healing as our thank you gift when you support Cornerstone Television this month. Request your copy today. If you want to strengthen the ministry of CTVN, share your best gift by visiting us online at ctvn.org donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for your partnership. Hope happens here. Wow, I love this so much today. What a thought of that God wants all of our plans, everything that he's called us to, to succeed. And there's a lot of things that can interfere with that. But let me just start here. I love what this says here in Proverbs 16:3. It says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Angela, what a promise, yes. right, that we can stand on today when we commit, when we seek first, when we give all to God, because ultimately... Yes. That's where our help from, comes it. from, right? That's where the ideas, that's where the plans, I mean, he's the one that's gifted us, but, yes. but Angela, when we commit it to him, then our plans shall succeed. That's right. You know, I think a lot of times, especially when we start talking about business principles or action steps we can take, we can get confused and actually think that our plans rise and fall on us, mm. but they rise and fall on the risen Christ. Mm. And so in this scripture, I love that it says, commit your plans to the Lord. Yeah. Let it be his leading and leaning on him that takes you into those places of success. Mm. You know, Matt, I know you're in a new role. You're yeah wearing a lot of different hats. And yeah. so what has it looked like in this season of your life, committing plans to the Lord? Yeah, you know, my pastor said to me, and so that rule for those of you watching is I'm this in the COO position. And so I'm over the staff, over the organization, the pr productivity of everything, making it move forward. And we can get in our heads at times. I get in my head a lot at, at times. And it's wild because I thought that I wasn't a really process driven person. But then something profound and powerful that my pastor said to me, he goes, it's already in you, yeah. so just do it. You know, how many times do we just overcomplicate things? Right. Like, again, we have to remember God wrote it out before the beginning of time. Yeah. And I don't think that he wrote up for our lives for us to fail. That's right. Right. And That's so right. where we fail is when we get in our own way. Yes. When we get in our head, we allow our, our processes, That's right, true. to be more important than the promise. Yes. And so, yeah. Angela, I think for me and, and for all of us is, what does it look like? Like, how do we stop getting out of our head, Yes. right? And how do we yes. stop some of these things that are interfering us from being successful? Yeah, like I think what you just said, you have to recall, remember, mm -hmm. like Jesus tells us continually, remember yeah. who he is and that his plans are sovereign. Yeah, yeah. If he brought you to it, he'll bring you mm -hmm. through it. If he's purposed mm -hmm. it for your life, you'll see it fulfilled. And so it's resting. It's that Psalm 4610, be still and know mm. that I am God. So no matter what we're facing, whether it's a yeah. new position where yeah. we have more responsibilities, Matt, mm -hmm. whether it's stepping out of the boat and going into ministry or stepping out of the boat and going into yeah. business, we have to remember that when we seek him first, yes. his mind be formed in me. Mm. And so as I rest in the reality that his mind is in me yeah. and I'm seeking him, all of my steps yeah. are ordered of the Lord. Powerful. One thing that Jeff was saying there towards the end, which I think is just the most greatest reminder we all need is it's by faith, right? Yes. I mean, we, we have to see by faith, we have to act by faith. And I think that's where like the stumbling block can be, right? Is yes. because things look too big or I can't obtain that or I'm not yes. qualified. Oh my gosh, 
How many times do we hear that all the time? I'm not qualified enough to be greater than I already am. But it's by faith. And faith helps us to see. I mean, faith sees everything as an opportunity, you know? And, and so why don't we speak to that a little bit, encourage those watching right now is, is he said, see through the lens of faith. You have yes. to have faith because without it, you won't take the risk, yes. right? You won't step forward. Instead, you'll stay in this comfortable place. Yes. And I don't think God wants us to just stay <laughs> no. comfortable. No, he doesn't, Matt. It's by faith that Abraham obtained the yes. pro right. promise. It is by faith that Moses led a nation into mm. freedom. I am confident when Moses was in Midian, in the middle of his life and kind of fearing of going back to Egypt, he didn't think, oh yeah, this is going to be a good plan. I'm going to see a nation mm. set free. No, the father placed it in his heart. And there are things that the Father has placed in your heart. Today, no matter how big or how small they are, God wants to see them through. He's the author of them, he's the worker of them, and he's the finisher of them. And here at CTVN, we like to get behind you as well. And we want to link our hearts with you and pray with you and agree for you. And you can email us at prayer at ctvn.org for us to do just that. You know, if they're watching today, Matt, maybe you could just encourage the viewer yeah. to seek one more step closer to obtaining that which the Lord has promised. Yeah, can I just leave it here is, it's simple. <laughs> Don't overcomplicate it. You are called for such a time as this. And if you really think about that, and not, I don't mean think about it in your head, I mean, if you really get revelation on it in your spirit, in your heart that, wow, I'm called for such a time as this, the Bible tells us that he works all things out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Well, you are called. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that, resting and knowing God has this purpose written out for me and his purpose is to see me succeed in all things. And your purpose isn't just in big moments. You might be sitting on a hospital bed right now. You might find yourself in the nitty gritty of picking up more Cheerios and wondering, well, I'm not out in the big world. What could my purpose look like? Your purpose looks like being the light of Christ wherever you are. He wants to make all places full of his goodness and joy. So embrace him, embrace all that he has for you today and trust that God is using you to perform that which he desires and designed you for. There truly is hope today. God bless you and make it a great week.